You guys went outside? Uh, you guys went outside? You guys uh, went outside? You guys went outside? You guys went outside? <laughs> Bro, y'all are gonna be out there five minutes and you're gonna be on the other side of the door doing the same thing. Let me back in. Let me back in. All right, go. <laughs> oh, 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 let's get some air, airflow. Can we get some donuts? Can we get some donuts? Yeah, that's my dude. That's my dude. That's my little fluffy dude. What up, guys? Welcome back to the garage, man. Today, well, for one, oh, crap, where's my thing? I already freaking lost my thing. <laughs> My entire life yesterday the whole entire day searching for this for this damn thing not knowing that I could simply just run up to freaking O'Reilly's and just go buy a new one good lord man oh look at that oh would you just look at that Come on, find the thread. Jeez. Oh, aren't they just a happy looking little couple? Would you just look at it? <laughs> Would you just look at it? Sick. All right, now we can move forward with that damn thing. And you know what I forgot yesterday? Completely spaced it because it was hiding inside of the battery box. James Price sent us a package and I probably ought to be careful slamming it around because I don't know what's in here. Sorry, James. I didn't forget about you. Actually, yeah, I did. <laughs> Oops, probably watching right now. Like, dude, I sent that three months ago. <laughs> Normally, I can kind of predict what's in here. You know what I mean? Like, just like filling it. You know what? Let's try. It feels like it's something plastic. It almost seems like a, uh, it almost seems like it's some kind of GoPro mount, but there's two of them, whatever it is. All right, let's see. What the hell? <laughs> Feels like a GoPro mount. I was feeling this right here. They're freaking side markers. What were these for? I think these are for the EP3. I think, I think these were EP3 side markers. I seem to remember somebody mentioning that they're gonna send uh, EP3 side markers. So huge shout out to James. Thank you, brother. I most certainly appreciate it. I haven't, I haven't checked for sure yet to see if those are uh, indeed for EP3, but I assume they are. All right, I'm about to get into digging into my dash on the blazer. I really want to just pull the dash because I feel like to get everything running all clean and nice, it's probably going to be better just go ahead and take the dash out. What are y'all doing? What's going on there, Marky Mark? What's up, man? You haven't had a camera pointing at you in a while, have you? Nope. What <laughs> the hell? What's going on in here? Lined up. What's the 2 by 4 for? That was going 2 by 4 I think I had that in there, huh? Oh, holding the clutch. Yeah, because I was tripping the starter out there. Have you figured anything out on the old Google? Oh, bro, is that tape been on his dash the whole time? Oh, shit. That wasn't me. That was Braven. I don't even think it was that color when we put it. <laughs> I, I don't think they have any hope of figuring that car out. Ugh. Wiring, bro. That's, that's the part that I hate the most about it, is diagnosing problems. Speaking of problems, here we go with working on the damn problem child. Um, yeah, anyhow, I wanna pull the dash because I need to find room for that fuse box over there. I gotta find room for the ECU. I also wanna kinda figure out what all that bundle of wires. Shut up, I'm talking here. I also wanna figure out what this bundle of wires is for. So I kind of get eyes on where this stuff goes, you know what I mean? And just get a an overall feel of what's going on in behind this damn thing. Is this something I want to do? Well, actually, yes, it is something I want to do. But is this something I feel like doing? Hell fucking no. To be honest with you, I haven't been I haven't been feeling like working on cars at all, man. So if I'm out here doing it, then you guys should be doing it too. Uh, make sure you're working on your projects and keeping active, bro. I know the summer freaking months makes it a lot harder and it's a lot more difficult to find the motivation, but you just gotta do it. You see, what I do to get through it is just do a whole lot of talking to my camera rather than working, if you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get to work. got to say this cooler is kick-ass right now bro because it's aiming right at the door 
which kind of reflects the wind into the blazer. So it's been pretty dope, man. It's not terrible at all. Honestly, it's a little bit of a cooler day today. Um, looking at the forecast, we actually have um, like 20% chance for rain. So, I mean, that's a little difference in pace. Anyhow, um, I've just been kind of trucking along, just taking stuff off. Um, if I'm being honest, whenever I took the dash out of the truck, I remember it being just a nightmare, bro. And I don't know why. It seems like it's going... You know what? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it, dude. I'm just going to jinx myself. Um, I am going to go ahead and get all this stuff that I've taken off so far up here just kind of stacked out of the way because once things start to get a mess bro is when i start feeling overwhelmed and my ocd starts getting the best of me and i'm just like it it drives me nuts when everything start getting messy you know what i'm saying uh i'm gonna leave the ashtray for now because that's why i'm putting all the freaking bolts and screws in yeah, another good thing about taking the dash apart is, um, well, taking it off. I'm going to be able to kind of clean it up while I have it off and maybe try to fix it. I don't know. I've seen some videos of people fixing this kind of stuff. I mean, this is pretty freaking bad, bro. And that sucks, dude, because I do want the interior on this to be nice. And I think the dash, it's kind of the main focal point, you know? Anyhow, I wanted to show you guys this before I got too much further. So I actually took, I've only taken out a 10 on this side and I took out a 10 from the center um, and look how much movement I already have <laughs> that is all that I have taken out like everything else that I have taken off kind of just like removed little doors and uh, the centerpiece where the stereo goes like that's just a bunch of screws uh, when I took all that out the dash was still solid as hell I just took out those two tens and I've already got all of that movement bro and then I just found that there's a couple smaller Number seven's up here. I think that's what it was. <sighs> bro, see, I just had it. What's happening? Oh, it's in my damn pocket, bro. What the hell? Yeah, there's a number seven. So the bottom is loose. Uh, the top is still pretty solid. So I'm interested to see if these are really all that's holding this up here. Give me the screw. Give it to me, mother. Come on. Nope, come on. Oh, dude, I need my magnet. Oh, I need my magnet. Oh, it's right here. Nice. Really? You sack of shit. Hey, get off my... All right, this is turning into a mess. Give it to me, bro. What the hell? Thank you. Good Lord. Ow! Son of a bastard. <sighs> All right, this has got to turn back on. I've had this off for a second. Now I'm sweating my ass off. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy I did this because that wiring is freaking ridiculous, bro. Like, yeah, that looks like it's all like speakers and, yeah. dude. Lovely! Grand! Grand! Ah! Gently, gently take my aggression out. <laughs> Things fragile, you know? Well, to be honest with you guys, the adventures of dash removal is done for the day. <laughs> I'm gonna clean this mess up um, and move on to something else because I don't have the mental patience. I don't have the patience to deal with this right now. This is an absolute freaking mess, bro. Somebody has been in here before. Uh, all the factory wiring is no longer being held up by anything. 
I'd imagine that there was probably some kind of like factory zip ties and stuff holding all this stuff up. But um, a lot of this has been like torn out of the loom. There's a bunch of freaking dollar store speaker wire just running everywhere. Like, dude, what the, what the hell is on the end of that? I don't know, bro. Yeah, I'm ex I am very happy that I took the dash off because this is a disaster that I do not want. This is not the condition I want my wiring to be in. So we will be fixing this, just not tonight. All right, got my mess all cleaned up. I'm gonna start on this engine bay. Uh, I'm gonna pick back up on uh, the interior. On all that wiring in there, probably tomorrow morning. Uh, first thing in the morning after I've had some sleep and I'm not annoyed. But I'm not gonna lie, dude, I feel pretty accomplished just getting the dash out. I was dreading doing this. It was a lot easier than what I was expecting. A lot easier than what I remember from removing the dash out of the truck. Um, I think what I am remembering was a pain in the ass is all of the air conditioning stuff. All of this stuff right here. Here because there's like for one it's a pain in the ass to take it apart but there's like like studs that stick out that have nuts on it and then there's also bolts that go in this way but then there's a couple of bolts that go in this direction and there's like a thousand of them so I think that's I think that is what it is I'm thinking of was a pain in the ass and not necessarily the dash but anyhow I'm gonna go ahead and move on I want to get all of this wiring out of here I'm just gonna go ahead and take that bulkhead plug off um set it aside i need to go through and figure out what wires i need and all that stuff once again uh we basically need to make a harness that comes off of this that is going to now just run into the interior and down like in behind the dash in which luckily now we have the dash off and it's gonna be a lot easier to do that and we're gonna get rid of this damn cracky broken thing i need to do a new overflow like we have talked about in a previous video i'm going to get rid of this battery tray because we are going to be relocating the battery i also need to figure out where to mount this thing up i probably shouldn't be telling you guys all of this because more than likely ain't going to get all that done tonight <laughs> but that's that's all the things that are on my mind get rid of that wiring mess get rid of the overflow make an overflow get rid of the battery tray figure out where i'm going to mount that all right it was either this one Hell no, that's way too big. See, that's what she said. <laughs> or that, no, that's too big also. What the hell? Oh, this one is just right. I'll also get rid of this little mounting bracket for that fuse box because I no longer need that. The fuse box from the old engine harness. It, you didn't know what I was talking about. So yeah, that's basically how that's gonna look. This is headlight harness in which I'll probably, oh, you know what? I could run that back here so it's not looping across there. I can still kind of clean that up a little bit. I just have to know. Do you guys have to know like I have to know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it didn't completely shatter like I thought it was going to. But, yeah, that thing is freaking dry rotted to hell, bro. I mean, at least it happened when it happened. And it didn't happen like when I was like out and about. I mean, it wouldn't have been a total disaster. But it would have sucked if it blew up while I was like out and about. And what the hell? Super freaking sticky inside for some reason probably from all the damn paint remover that I had to use to get all the damn spray paint off of it if I'm being honest trash box <laughs> Bro this blazer is so damn sexy man Hell freaking yes, I'm stoked to actually unclutter this engine bay that looks so much better now getting rid of that damn thing. Now we get to get rid of that ugly ass battery tray as well. All 
Oh, baby, I am loving it, dude. I really want to run the intake this direction. Uh, originally, before I started putting all this together and realizing that things are, you know, kind of filling up, uh, my original idea was to make like an intake box, you know, with maybe some a vent or a velocity stack that somehow goes to the front. I don't know, man. It would take some figuring out, but um, and have the intake come this direction. Uh, the biggest obstacle there would be getting past this radiator hose, in which I have some ideas for that. It's just I really dreaded having to go this direction direction because of how crowded like not only do you have the radiator hose kind of swinging out here which takes up a lot of real estate in this area but the alternator man like I just thought it would look weird with the intake pipe just sitting like literally a quarter of an inch away from the alternator it just looked like proportionately it I just feel like it would look better swooping this direction so uh, getting rid of the battery tray is a huge plus and then of course we're also helping with our weight transfer moving some weight to the back taking some weight off the front it's not like a drastic change we're not like rear mounted radiator status or nothing but little improvements <laughs> All right, well, I'm sitting here trying to map this thing out. I was doing like some research on it, and it turns out that a lot of people will actually run the power wire along the frame. I mean, as long as you attach it to the frame. And I'm like, okay, that's that would actually be a lot easier than running it through the firewall and all that stuff. So um, if I can drop it down and get into the frame and run back, then I wouldn't have to worry about like getting it under the carpet or where it's gonna route inside of the blazer. Uh, but I don't know how exactly to get to the frame. So my idea here is I would like these to still run to the front. Um, and I'm thinking about putting that, where'd it freaking go? God dang it, oh, it's right here. I'm thinking about putting this like right here in this area, but we'll talk about that here in a second. So. Uh, but I was I want to run these Up here and then they'll, it'll connect to it there um, But I got to get this running cleaner for one. I want the power wire That's coming off the starter. I need to get it behind the engine mount instead of in front of the engine mount like this and then the ground This piece that goes to the frame the smaller wire that actually screws to the frame right there uh, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking I ought to switch that out and run a thick like battery cable bolted to the frame up here and then it will bolt to the negative lug and then run down. So then like it's going to the engine block and the engine block is grounded directly to the frame and then the back the battery I'm going to run the the ground out and bolt it straight to the frame also. I don't know but one, once it runs up here like I can run the power wire maybe inside of the fender. I don't know if I'm gonna have an area I can drop down and then make it over to the frame under there or if I should run the power like run the power up to the stud and then back down the stud just run it with these and then run this direction to the frame. The only thing I'm afraid of is when the header is on the header takes up like every single bit of that real estate right there. I just don't want any any of the wires by the exhaust up for obvious reasons. So I don't know, I'm just trying to map this out, but I do know that I want this right here. But the only problem is, um, you see where it bolts up? Like there's nothing underneath here and I don't wanna put it like that, that'd be dumb. I was thinking about maybe like this, but uh, the backside of those studs are really close to the, the fender so what it is I think I'm going to do is actually just straighten this out I think that's my best option if I straighten it out then I could just put this right here and this bracket would be running straight and I can bolt it straight through the fender right there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now hopefully I, I don't do it now and then regret it later because I decide to put it somewhere else that's sounds like my luck but either way let's try to straighten this thing this thing is not aluminum, so it's going to be interesting. Shit. Baby, come back.
All right, well that is just about as flat as I'm gonna get it, bro. But that's all right. The ugly portion of this will be covered up because I'm actually going to bolt it in behind like that. So it'll just hang down like that. And that ugly like bent portion will be behind the fender. Looking all beautiful and shit. So I'm gonna drill that out and get it bolted up. I just have those sitting in there so you can kind of get an idea what it is those are going to look like. But yeah, we still have a lot of work to do before we actually install them. But yeah, that came out pretty freaking clean, bro. I'm definitely digging it. It's going to look a lot better with that there rather than the whole battery and battery tray. Shit, I'm down for it. mornings right i mean while it's not as bad of course as it is in the middle of the day it's definitely not enjoyable in the morning either <laughs> anyhow dude every time i look inside of this engine bay now i feel like there's something missing like i it it has like this oh crap i took it all apart look to it it's pretty bare now i mean anyhow uh my first thing on the agenda for this morning is to try to find a place to route this damn wire like we we're talking about last night so that's why i got this thing jacked up so i can get underneath there and see if i can figure out a way to pass that power wire like my main worry is this area right here i need to figure out a way to safely get it from here to start heading back there. The frame rail is for the most part wide open, you know, from the firewall back, but I gotta get to that point without being close to that damn header. Well, that damn header, you know what I mean. All right, so I think that I have a game plan. Uh, I am going to, so I have a bunch of this wire loom left like i have enough of this stuff that i could probably go over that cable like three or four times to make sure it's good and protected um just i mean if it needs it i doubt it's gonna need all of that but just as a safety precaution you know what i'm saying uh so i was thinking about just drilling a hole right here and going straight down into the frame there and then going back uh the inside of the frame is obviously hollow uh, there is a pocket for the spring, but it's completely closed off. So you, you don't have to worry about any kind of pinching or anything from the spring pocket. And I also figured instead of drilling a hole right there, if you get underneath, you can see, if I didn't just take my light off my head, you could see, ugh, damn it. So right there inside of that hole, I figured I'd go ahead and go in right there. And what I'm gonna do is the section of the cable that actually goes inside of the frame. I'm gonna go over it like three or four times, like I said, with this loom. And then where it sticks out of the frame right there, I figured I'd go ahead and run it inside of um, some hose to make sure it's good and protected. I have some pretty big diameter hose. I have small, I think that one's probably too big. That, that's what she said anyway. 
But yeah, I have plenty of hose that, like I'll put that whole piece on there with the majority of it inside of the frame and like that much of it sticking out, you know what I'm saying? So I know that I don't have to worry about that wire chafing at all. But the problem is I gotta get it through that section of frame. And that's what I'm gonna be using this thing for. What the? Freaking Zorro, bro, what is up? So this is an old CB antenna. I've had this thing for I've had this thing longer than I've had khaki because this came on the K5 Blazer that I sold before I got khaki. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a picture of it up on the screen right now. Maybe a couple of pictures of it. Same exact color, bro. I painted that blazer way before I painted khaki and way before I had a YouTube channel. And I missed that damn thing so much, bro. It was a 77. It had an LS in it, bro. <laughs> I know this is like way off subject and kind of a sidetrack, but speaking of the blazer, that thing had an LS in it and it had a turbo 400, a built up turbo 400 transmission, but it had a conversion intake manifold and it was carbureted. Whenever people would ask me what engine was inside of that thing, I would always tell them it was a 5.7 liter because it was a 5.3 liter. But back then, like I always thought that 5.3 uh, sounds like it's such a smaller engine in comparison to a 5.7. And those things like for the most part came with a small block 350, a 5.7 liter. So um, I, I felt embarrassed to say it was a 5.3. So I always told everybody it was a 5.3. 0.7 back then I didn't even really know what an LS was but yeah bro that thing had an iron block 5.3 liter LS in it that was converted over to a carburetor and it was it was a dope ass truck dude with a turbo 400 trans it had 38 inch super swampers those things whenever you drove down the street roar, 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 and I used to hit those big out you know those big speed bumps in neighborhoods if you slow down and then gun it like right before the front tires hit it the front end would come off the ground going over those and it would bounce and it would literally sound like a basketball bouncing on the ground dude that thing was so freaking dope but anyhow um, i'm gonna use that cb antenna which is the only thing i have left of my k5 blazer uh, i'm gonna try to slide this through the frame and get it to stick out the front so i could tape the cable onto this and pull it through that's the idea if it's gonna work out like that, who freaking knows? Cause it does get a little wonky and curvy up here. Well, that seems to be as far as it wants to go. And while we're here, Look at my drive shaft. It's still holding up, baby. Yes, sir. I see a little rub mark right there, though. <laughs> it's obviously rubbing underneath there. Uh, okay, where are you at? Where am I gonna find you? Am I gonna find you? Uh, give me a second. I'll be back with you. Probably gonna need two hands here. And some needle nose. Mm. Bet these guys right here will help, huh? All right, so I just went ahead and ran this loom like the full length, bro. Like it it almost went all the way to the end. I got a couple of feet sticking out in the back over there. I figured, why not? This stuff is cheap enough. Like I may as well just try to protect as much of it as I possibly can. So over here on the end, I like to electrical tape it. So I pull the electrical tape nice and tight to where it's on the loom. And then it also is going to run onto the wire so I know it can't move around. Well, damn, never mind. I was gonna say I like to electrical tape it and then I slide my shrink wrap over the top of the electrical tape and then I'll shrink wrap that right there. But this is the biggest shrink wrap I've got and it won't even fit on this damn shit. <laughs> All right, here we go. I taped the living shit out of that thing. So, so I'm gonna start pulling on that. Hopefully we see you on the other side, buddy. Hey there, little buddy. I was hoping that you and I would meet again very soon. <laughs> All right. 
All right, we got our power wire running up here, and I got just enough slack, well, a couple extra inches, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then it passes through the firewall, and, or not the firewall, Jesus. Should I just start over? Should I just start over? Got the power wire running in here. I gave myself a couple extra inches, and then it's going through the front core support, and then it wraps around into that wide open area of the frame. So it's not going through a little hole. Passing through the frame, and then bam, it drops down right here. So I need to get up here and actually strap it down inside of the frame. We gotta find a place to pass through the floor. Uh, up into the back of the blazer. I want to mount the battery as far back basically as I can. You guys know on front wheel drive, like on our Hondas and stuff, whenever you want to add weight in the front to help you with traction, uh, people always make like the, the weight plate and stuff on the front. So with front wheel drive, you want the weight as far forward as you can and as far down as you can. Now with rear wheel drive, it is the exact opposite. You want it as far back as you can and as high up as you can make it. That is going to be the best place for the weight to work with you. Now, of course, this is uh, this is for the street. Sometimes if you have too much weight transfer, like on the track, uh, it's hard to keep the front end down. You'll start popping wheelies and stuff. So that's the reason why I want the battery as far back as I could possibly get it. I mean, if we're gonna put it in the trunk, I may as well make as much use out of it as I possibly can. But we're gonna pick back up on this in tomorrow's video. Well, I mean, <sighs> I'm gonna keep working on it right now, but I am out of time for today's video. I gotta get this posted up for you guys. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we made really good progress. I've gotten rid of a lot of the clutter out of the engine bay. We got this damn dash pulled out. Throw it in the comments down below. Uh, any recommendations for whatever products I would use. For, if I wanted to repair this, sand it. I've seen that they use like a Bondo, but it's not Bondo. You know what I'm saying? I. I don't know, I could probably find it, but I love hearing feedback from you guys. Got the power wire, for the most part ran. We'll finish this up in tomorrow's video. And before I leave, I wanna give a huge shout out to all 107 of you DB Fam members who have actually ordered a pre-order shirt. Actually, I think I heard it go off earlier today. Oh, I have two orders today. Yeah, so a Watson. Well, I don't know if that's your first name or your last name, bro. It's Watson Samuel. So I don't know if it's Samuel Watson or Watson Samuel. Either way, <laughs> from Justin and Watson. Shout out to both of you guys. So 107, 8, 9. So shout out to all 109 people who have actually ordered a pre-order shirt. I most certainly appreciate it. And a lot of you guys, um, well, not a lot. A few of you guys actually ordered two or three of them, man, which I most certainly appreciate. We're going to try to make it go as far as we possibly possibly can man if you guys would like to see uh something amazing happen with gotham out there uh grab yourself a pre-order shirt every single bit of the profit is going to be going into gotham i'm going to start this week on making i think instead of writing your guys's names with sharpie on the roof i think i'm just going to make it out of vinyl and actually do vinyl stickers of everybody's name uh, i'm going to cover the roof and if we if we run out of room then i'm going to start doing the cowl on the hood and then probably the trunk also but i mean that's if we run out of room you know I'm saying <laughs> anyhow uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video we're gonna pick right back up where we left off tomorrow I also didn't get to my damn overflow I'm gonna be making an overflow and it's gonna be pretty interesting peace I'll see you then